Hello and welcome to another English podcast with Paul. I'm your host, Paul. So today we're talking about business English, business English. And there are a few different types of business English to be aware of. So first of all, there's formal professional business English. Okay, just very stuff you'd hear quite common, you know, like email, office, calendar, things like that. And then there's a more specific, industry specific. Maybe if you're in IT, it would be um, like HTML or Python, JavaScript, encryption, blockchain, things like that. And then again, there's also um, academic speaking um, for, for professional uh, lecturers uh, and people in that industry. There's that kind of English as well. Right, so today I thought, there's a lot of stuff that, that you're not going to know. That's just how it is when you start, like, like when you're a, a young man getting into an industry. Or if you change to another industry, there's a whole load of new terminology. But what we've got today is a list of the generally used um, business English um, jargon or terminology. All right, so let's jump in with some of these words. Some of these words you might hear in phrases. And l like everybody else, we didn't know these phrases to start with, and some of them have just become more popular in more re recent years. Some you might hear in America more, some you might hear in England uh, or the UK more. So this is just my selection of business English words or phrases that you may hear. Okay, so to whom it may concern. That's often the beginning of a letter or an email where the person in charge is not known, whether it's to do with the building or an owner occupier of, a, of an apartment uh, to whom it may concern. All right. Uh, my hands are tied. It means that I can't get involved with that situation right now. My hands are tied. Maybe there's a biased, uh, a biased, um, attitude towards somebody, uh, maybe for legal reasons or, or something like that, or it may just be that somebody above them has made a decision and so their hands are tied. They, they can't do anything about it. What else we got? FYI, for your information. Sometimes that's in a, uh, an email, for your information, this is happening next month, I thought you might want to know um, or just be aware. What else we got? Um, Please find attached. Again, often with an email, you'll, you'll see that word or those words. Uh, and it means just to look for something else that's attached to the email. Maybe an invoice, some other document or receipt, something like that. So that was please find attached. Okay, resume. So in, in America, they generally use the word resume. And in some other countries, including the UK, we use the word CV also known as curriculum vitae. Now, it's a difficult word to spell, curriculum vitae. Anyway, all right, moving on, we've got a BCC or CC. Now, I, I didn't know this myself, I had to look it up. BCC is blind carbon copy and CC is carbon copy. Okay, so you're sending somebody the carbon copy of what you've got or what you're using. And the blind carbon copy is people don't know the other recipients in, in the chain of email. So blind carbon copy and carbon copy. All right, what else we got? Team building often goes along with um, team morale. You know, you want to keep the team generated and happy and productive. So there's some morale. Maybe there's a, a new vending machine. Maybe the, the boss brought them in some donuts. Hey, oh, we're all happy. Morale. Um, along with that would go cooperation. Cooperation uh, to, to help get work done or jobs done more effectively and efficiently. Also with that, you might have collaboration. So this team might have to connect with this team and, and, and work together to, to uh, a specific outcome, to get a specific outcome. All right, collaboration. Okay, start from scratch. 
That basically just means we've got to start all over again, back from the beginning. Um, another one would be um, back to the drawing board, where, where ideas are created, back to the drawing board. Okay, drawing board. Uh, start from scratch. Set deadlines and meet deadlines, you know? The deadline is, it's gotta be done by Monday morning. Maybe there's press, maybe it's to do with wages. Uh, and when I say press, I mean, I mean, uh, it has to go out to print. It has to go to the printers to get done by that time because it's scheduled. Um, yeah, okay. Deadlines, meet deadlines. You've got to meet the deadline, especially if you're a freelancer or if somebody's going away, you might have to meet the deadline. Otherwise, there's going to be consequences. All right, what else we got? Um, behind schedule or ahead of schedule? Come on, guys, this is behind schedule. We need to catch up. We need to go a bit faster, a bit harder. Behind schedule or ahead of schedule? Everybody likes ahead of schedule because that means that you're uh, doing well. Okay, so what else we got? Um, to catch up. Oh, can you, um, can you introduce this? This is Mary. Can, can you uh, help Mary catch up with what's happening? You know, another phrase with that would be, um, can you get Mary up to speed? Can you get them... Let them know what's happening and, and where we are now, you know, wh where we've been, what we've done and where we are now in regards to this project or, or the thing that we're working on. Up to speed to catch up. I've been on holiday for a week. I need to catch up with what's happening. I need to catch up with emails, things like that. All right, okay. Um, stay on budget. You know, don't go over budget because people will be upset. But uh, often that is the case, you go over budget. But you might hear the term, stay on budget. Stay on budget. All right, okay, what's next? Um, sign off on. Now, that sounds like an oxymoron. That sounds a bit back to front. Sign off on. My employer has to sign off on this project, on my purchase. I, I need this for the job, but I need the uh, people in the accounts or, or somebody above me to sign off, to say, yeah, it's okay, uh, go ahead with that transaction. Sign off on, on that thing, sign off on. Okay, a ballpark figure. So how much is it gonna cost? Oh, I really don't know. Hundreds, thousands? Well, just give me a ballpark figure. So a ballpark figure would, would literally just be a rough area, a rough idea, all right? I guess it comes from the ballpark. Ballpark figure, all right, okay. White collar, white collar. And there's also blue collar. So a white collar is generally deemed somebody that works in an office, maybe in finance or, or, uh, or a solicitor, that kind of thing, somebody's a white collar person. Somebody who's a blue collar person is generally somebody that works more with their hands uh, and more physical. So the, the blue collar would be the fact that you didn't get, you got dirtier in your job, uh, hence why you used to wear um, a colored shirt to look smart, but also you would get dirty. So maybe if you're, um, I don't know, a, a carpenter or, or a, some other person that works outdoors or with their hands, you're more likely to wear a, a blue collar. And if you work in an office and you had to be a higher level of presentation to meet new customers, new clients, then you're more likely to wear a white collar. Although a white collar is harder to clean, but there we go. White collar, blue collar. Okay, um, look at the big picture. People are getting too focused, too granular, looking at the smaller problems in front of them and not the big picture where the company is going, what we're looking to do, what we're aiming for, looking at the big picture, okay? Um, kind of opposite to that would be micromanaging. When, when your boss is right over your shoulder, say, do this this way, do it that way, do it this way micromanaging. Obviously in the beginning when you're first learning a new skill or a new, um, a new system, then you might have to be micromanaged. Or if you're performing poorly, then you might have to be micromanaged. Otherwise it's generally deemed a negative situation. Okay, micromanaged. 
Right. Um, play by the book. Play by the book. So often people would um, only do exactly what is asked of them and, and not do any more. You know, so I'm playing by the book because the employer is, is cutting this and cutting that and stopping this and stopping that. So we're going to play by the book. We're going to do only what we're uh, supposed to do in our contract and nothing more and nothing less. So that's a bit of gameplay often with um, employers and employees. Okay, play it by the book. Or sometimes it might be a case of having um, negotiations or communications and one person said, look, we need to play it by the book. We need to do it properly and correctly as it's set out in the book. There's not often a real book. They're just talking metaphorically, you know, set out, play it by the book. Okay, corner the market, corner the market. So that means to, to um, get in there uh, and sort of block it off so we can get everything in. Corner the market means you're going to get the, the bigger share of the business, of the trade. You're cornering the market because you've been there a long time. You've got, you know, some good credentials and that. You're really cornering the market. So that's a positive, good thing. To touch base. Ah, your employer is going on, on holiday, but uh, he, will, he will be um, sending emails to touch base and to find out what's going on in the office and how things are going to touch base. Um, get your foot in the door. So to get your foot in the door is to start at the at the beginning, maybe you're starting in a company and you have to start down the bottom and work your way up. Or if you're a salesman, uh, and I think that's where the term came from, somebody who got their foot in the door meant that the door was not shut. And so there was somewhere to start, some leverage to begin with. So with a salesman getting his foot in the door, was going, okay, well, you don't want to buy this or you don't want to buy this service. That's fine, that's fine. Maybe you might know somebody that might want to buy it in the future. Let me just tell you about it anyway. I know you don't want to buy it, but let me just tell you about it anyway. You know, you don't have to, no obligation. That's getting your foot in the door. All right, so some, some other similar ones like this would be from the ground up. You know, we've got to start the business from the ground up, actually at the bottom and working up the business. Or you're building something, um, uh, some other kind of project that you're going to build from the ground up. ROI. ROI, return on investment. Well, if I'm going to buy this house, this rental property, I want to know what the ROI is. I want to know what the return on investment is. You know, if my monthly uh, income from, from renters is going to be this much, how long before I make my money back? And how much return on investment is there on a year by year basis? So, in a bank, you would probably say if you had savings in a good bank with 7% interest, uh, well, depending on what the interest is, 7% uh, is a, a good rate of, rate of interest, rate of return on the interest, rate of return, return on interest, return of interest. Oh, I don't know. I'm getting confused now. Right. Um, mission statement. Most companies have a mission statement to set out and to tell the public and to tell the world what we are as a company, what we're planning on doing, and this is what we're all doing together, and uh, this is our ethos, this is our mission statement, and all the staff are on board, and we all have the same agenda to, to give the customers the best, the best customer satisfaction, or whatever they choose. Okay, it's, it's all a bit um, marketing rubbish for me, but there you go. Um, target demograph. Okay, so that's generally uh, who your target or average customer would be. So your customer could be anybody, but generally it seems to be this kind of people, whether it's mothers or whether it's uh, wealthy older gentlemen. Your target demographic, that the people that generally is your customer. Okay, um, outsourcing. So this is like using freelancers or Fiverr or Upwork, one of these online platforms, and you outsource uh, some tasks that's cheaper to get done by somebody that's more professional, somebody that's quicker, or somebody that has less overheads. So you might need some video editing done, 
and you might send it to Fiverr and get somebody from a, another country where they have less costs and uh, get it done quicker and cheaper. Uh, and there's a lot of reviews and a lot of toing and throwing and uh, yeah, it's, it's outsourced. Okay, downsizing, downsizing. The company is downsizing. It means that they're reducing their overheads and their costs. So they're making smaller offices. They're making changes basically to, to, to save money. They're downsizing. So maybe now the, the um, executive managers aren't getting Mercedes as their company car. Maybe they're just getting Citroen C5 or, or a BMW. I don't know. Downsizing. All right. Play hardball. Uh, negotiation terms. He's playing hardball. In other words, he, he's not negotiating and cooperating very well. He's, he's standing his ground with what it is that, that he or she wants for their negotiations. Playing hardball. Okay. Word of mouth. Now, it's said to be the best advertising is by word of mouth. You have a great experience with this company. You tell a friend. You tell another friend. And so it builds by reputation. Often small businesses um, are built on word of mouth. Often like a barber shop or a hairdresser, they would get a lot of word of mouth advertising and a lot of good reviews. Word of mouth. Okay. A yes man. So somebody is a yes man is a person that always says yes to their employer. Maybe... Um, People that, that are around celebrities or people around people with um, power or influence. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was really good. Yeah, that was good. That was good. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. You're amazing. You're amazing. Yeah, that's great. That's great. And so they're less likely to be honest and, and stand up to the individual and tell them, you know, the truth. A yes, man. Yes. Yes, boss. Yes, boss. You'll do the best. ASAP. As soon as possible, as soon as possible. Can you get that document to me ASAP? Okay, boss, as soon as possible. Uh, what we said, drop the ball, drop the ball. That means that somebody that was working on something um, had let something fall down. They'd failed to, to pick up on details and they made a mistake, basically. They made a mistake, something happened and they drop the ball. They're gonna be in trouble. You drop the ball. Okay. Uh, I mentioned team morale and collaboration. Nine to five. That's just the general office hours uh, and that's a very general business term. Work nine till five. Uh, to give the green light. Oh, and we said earlier to sign off on. My boss needs to give the green light. Give the go ahead to say, yes, that's okay, we can do it. Verbal confirmation, give the green light. The elevator pitch, come on, give me the elevator pitch. That means pretend we are stuck in an elevator and you've got like 20 or 30 seconds to tell me the important bits and get me excited and interested, all right? The elevator pitch, the elevator pitch. <gasps> right, well, go, 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 excitement. Okay, elevator pitch. Up to speed, I've already said. Um, go over our budget. Well, that's kind of the same as saying uh, on budget. Going over our budget is very bad. Uh, to be ahead of the curve, to be ahead of the curve. Now, I think that this is in regards to the bell curve, in regards to um, sales figures and, 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 um, and that kind of marketing. You know, you want to be ahead of the curve. You want to be before everybody else. You know, you want to get there before everybody else. Maybe you want to buy um, blockchain or, or Ethereum before it gets really popular and everybody buys it. And so you want to be ahead of the curve. What else we got? Up to speed. We've covered that. Yeah. Catch up with somebody up to speed. Um, to kick off. Sorry, my notes are down here. To kick off. Right then. We're starting the meeting now. Everybody ready? Everybody ready? Okay. Let's kick off the meeting. Sally, can you tell me what's happening in, uh, in the sales department, please? All right, let's kick off. Let me, let's start. I assume it comes from football. There we go, to kick off. 
All right, we got what's up doing it? All right, zoom out. Now, zoom out is a bit similar to what I said earlier about looking at the big picture. Okay, everybody, let's just zoom out for a moment. Let's take a step back. Let's have a look at everything. All right, often that's done by a painter or, or maybe um, a room designer. They would do that as well. They would step back and take a, a look at the big picture, look at the whole thing, zoom out a little bit. Uh, we said about granular managing and micromanaging, granular. So not all the small, all the small bits. Let's call it a day. Let's call it a day. Right. Okay. Thank you, everybody. That's enough for one day. Let's call it a day. So that just means to finish up, to, to stop, which we'll be doing in a moment. Okay. Um, let's think outside the box. So we have an imaginary box. We've all got these similar ideas of what, what we would guess or say or, or expect. So think outside the box is thinking of unexpected things, super creative, crazy ideas. <gasps> I know, what about blah, 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 blah. Something outside the box, something different and crazy and unusual. Um, red tape. Oh, everybody hates red tape. So red tape is kind of the bureaucracy of a company. Well, before we can give you this stapler, you need to fill out this form and that form and then take it over to that office. They need to sign it. They need to check it. And then they can release the, 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 the correct codes and money. And then you can buy your stapler. Ugh. red tape, bureaucracy. So there's obviously a lot of red tape, a lot of bureaucracy. Often people get sucked into it when it comes to health and safety. Health and safety, the bureaucracy of it, and the same with the HR and um, policies and procedures. It's all a bit of that red tape, kind of slows you down for, for stopping you going in, guns blazing. <laughs> guns blazing, all right, going in fast, you know. To let go. Okay, I'm really sorry, but I'm going to have to let you go. So letting somebody go means to say they're sacked or they're no longer needed in employment. I need to, I have to let you go. It's more of a polite way of saying you're fired. All right. Being fired is very aggressive unless somebody done something heinous. Um, being fired is quite harsh. Let go. Uh, you're no longer in, um, in your contract. Your contract is being uh, in void, null and voided, anyway, terminated, or terminated, let go, bureaucracy, ugh, okay, so that's all the words we have for now, if you have any interesting words, business words, English words, uh, from your industry, or in general, or some that I may have misrepresented, please let me know in the comments below, let me know in the comments below, okay, and as always, Thanks for listening. Remember, have fun, otherwise you're not learning. Have a great day. See you in the next video. Bye-bye for now.